Let's have a look at the uh, direction the China economy is going in with Bank of America Merrill Lynch economist Ting Lu, a former consultant of the World Bank. Uh, uh, Ting was recently named by Bloomberg Markets magazine as the world's top economic forecaster for China. So you've got quite a lot to live up to, haven't you, Ting? Right, let's, uh, first of all, let's just get a, a view from you as to the new growth targets, the uh -huh. inflation targeting uh -huh. here as well. Uh -huh. um, a lot of people surprised by just the reaction to this. Yeah. I mean, has anything really materially changed that much with these forecasts? Well, no. A year ago, uh, in March 2011, the Chinese government, the MPC, set 7% uh, growth target for the five-year plan from 2011 to 2015, which is lower than 7.5% in the previous five-year plan. So, well, so the 7.5% for this year is not really a surprise. And actually, most people know this number a couple of weeks before the opening of the MPC. So I guess um, people may be anyway surprised by the reaction, not really surprised by the number. It doesn't really portend a great slowdown, does it, as some people are suggesting, even mm -hmm. though the Chinese economy is without question slowing down? Well, that's right. Uh, there's a slowdown, and the Chinese government realizes there's a slowdown. But the slowdown is not to 7.5% this year. As we know, there's always some big difference between the growth targeted by the Chinese government and the actual growth. Usually, maybe the difference is 1 to 2 percentage points. So that's why it's quite safe to expect Chinese economic growth this year will be somewhere between 8 to 9 percent. Okay, let's also talk about the uh, inflation target as well. Now, inflation was vastly more benign than the economists were looking at, 3.2 percent in the last number okay. there. That gives the uh, People's Bank of China a lot of room here to do more monetary easing. In fact, there's no excuse but to do it now, really. Well, now, first of all, yes, there's some room, but room may not be so big because 3.2 percent CPI inflation in February is distorted downward by the Chinese New Year holiday. In January, the number was 4.5 percent, and a much better way to know what's going on on so inflation. Two, of course, yes. everybody sitting there has been saying that. Yeah, yeah then it's 3.8 percent. Mm. It's slightly below the 4 percent target, but yes, it's true that we expect inflation to go down to around 3 percent by the middle of the year, then we'll rebound to 4 percent. So there's some room, but the room is not very big. And also, we want to point out to the Chinese economy, the fundamentals uh, is slowing down, but it's not so terrible. So it's not necessary for the Chinese government to initiate a big stimulus pl uh, program at this moment. Ting, of course, this uh, Congress is going to be the noted for being the last one of uh, uh, Hu Jintao and uh, Wen Jiabao. Now, there's going to be change in leadership here. This, of course, everybody's saying is going to be a very smooth and a seamless change uh -huh. in administration here, but the administration which comes in, uh -huh. whichever one it is, we have clues of course as to who is going to be the next uh -huh. president. Uh -huh. How would it actually make its mark straight away? Well, um, now first we should um, expect less uh, for this year and the next year. Even the personalities or identities of these new politicians in the next generation are relevant but for this year, they're conservative, and even for next year, 2013, they'll still be conservative because it takes them some time to consolidate their power and to, anyway, to build up a stable cabinet. So yes, let's do expect more from 2014. Okay, but what changes do you actually expect? Because there's certain pressures within China, not least uh, the demographics here as well, uh, house prices, also land issues as well. These are yeah. things which need to be sorted out by the new administration. That's right. I think the most important uh, thing for them, first is about uh, population. Uh, second is about land. Third, maybe something about um, we call uh, the design of the government. Uh, well, for the population, everybody knows that it's quite an uh, imminent task for the Chinese government to stop the one-child policy because of the aging... Stop it entirely. Um, I think you, they can gradually maybe shift to a two-child policy, uh, for example. It's not r really that uh, uh, suddenly to uh, lift all the controls, but I think they can just take a gradual approach. Then they also need to give a better title to farmers um, because um, population... Um, aging, but the most imp serious problem for China is that the farmers are much older than the factory workers, and they need young farmers, but then they need to consolidate those land. Okay, so uh, no dangers ahead. Biggest danger, house prices? Is that what the biggest headwind is for the Chinese economy? Uh, I think so. For this year, the biggest domestic risk for China is definitely the property sector, but let's not to uh, exaggerate the risk because uh, the major channel 
of the impact from property sector to the Chinese economy this year, the fixed asset investment growth of the real estate. Um, but because of the pre-sale um, in the past, there's a lot of buildings um, to be uh, constructed this year. So that's why you can see there's still 28% year-on-year growth of the property API growth in the first two months.